Here we go. So we'll go ahead and get started. So if you have questions at any time during our presentation today, you can type them into the Q&A function of the webinar. Sometimes it's at the bottom of your screen. Sometimes it's at the top, depends on the device you're using. But if you just kind of touch around on the screen, you should be able to find the Q&A or chat function. And we'll answer your questions when we can. So uh, this map is uh, illustrates where Riverwoods Manchester is located. Manchester is in the name of our community, but we're about 10 minutes outside of the city in Northwest Manchester. Um, and we're located adjacent to a 640 acre nature conservancy and uh, kind of, but close to uh, major highways transit to Concord, um, Boston and the Manchester Boston Regional Airport. So it's a little bit of the best of both worlds, if you will. This is a campus map illustrating the shape of the building and a little bit about our um, plant, if you will. So you can see the main entrance, the different wings, um, the fitness room and the multi-purpose room were added in 2018, 16, as part of a renovation and expansion project with the Riverwoods Group. And White Birch Way up to the right there is the road that leads to our cottages. Okay, so this is a view of the current look of the exterior of our building. <laughs> it's under renovation, so we'll have some new exterior photos coming soon. Speaking of, here's a uh, rendition of the exterior improvements project provided by the architects. Um, and it's coming along nicely. It looks really beautiful. So a little bit about the Riverwoods group. Uh, Riverwoods is Northern New England's largest independent not-for-profit group of continuing care retirement communities. We're also known as life care or life plan communities. Um, and it started in Exeter and there, and that grew to three campuses, the woods, um, the ridge and the boulders and Riverwoods Manchester affiliated with the Riverwoods group in 2016 as Birch Hill. This building was constructed in the nineties and we made an official name change to Riverwoods Manchester last year. <laughs> uh, Riverwoods Durham is the newest community uh, that was constructed and opened in 2019. And SPE is the very official term for someplace else. <laughs> so when the time is right, uh, it will cautiously proceed with expanding um, the, the need for senior living. So Riverwoods Manchester hasn't always been a CCRC. It has a hundred year history in the Manchester area. It started out as a women's aid and relief society um, and became a continuing care retirement community in 2009. It's the only CCRC or life care community in Manchester. And the continuing care refers to independent living, assisted living, memory support, and nursing care if and when they're needed all under one roof. So we are uh, a part of the three community system, which I mentioned, but that also means that we have strength in numbers because we're part of a system and not an independent single plant community. Um, we have the financial strength of a group and the staffing strength of a group. We are a type B CCRC. And that means you only pay for the care that you need. The health insurance is defined at Riverwoods Manchester. So the insur it is an insurance product. That's what a CCRC is. It's not a real estate transaction, if you will. It's not a real estate purchase. Because it's considered long-term care insurance, um, you're prepaying for your future health care needs. So a portion, of your entrance fee for the year you move in and your monthly service fee every year is tax deductible. Uh, we also consider this, or a lot of people consider this, a gift to your children or your family. You're not burdening them with making decisions for you or having them care for you. 
And it's also a smart financial decision. You have your plan in place. You're getting that prepaid medical expense tax benefit every year. And, um, you know, everything is under control. So this is our 70% um, refundable flex contract. So this is the only one of its kind in New England. We only know of one other community in Texas that offers this type of contract. So it's a flexible, refundable entrance fee. 70% is refundable, or you can use that 70% of the entrance fee to offset the cost of healthcare and when the time comes. So it's really, it's flexible. Um, and it gives you more options. Katie, I'm not sure I did the best job explaining that, but I'm sure you'll you can fix it, right? <laughs> so, so the basics um, to uh, Riverwoods Manchester is we welcome you to move in while you're still independent and you'd like a change of lifestyle, free from the burden of home maintenance and chores, and um, open to other amenities like housekeeping, dining, uh, socialization options. There's a wellness clinic on site with a nurse practitioner. We have a social worker on site as well for your care coordination needs. As an independent living resident at Riverwoods Manchester, you receive the benefit of 30 free days of respite in our healthcare center. So if you have a bad winter, um, you know, get pneumonia or have a joint replaced, you can move to the health center for up to 30 days free of charge every year, get back on your feet and then move back to your independent living um, apartment. It doesn't, door doesn't shut behind you. So it's a huge benefit that many independent living residents take advantage of every year. And if and when the time does come to move to our health center, there's a defined uh, percentage or dollar amount off of the market rate for healthcare that you receive as a benefit for your lifetime. So just to take a break from the details a little bit, these are some residents that are independent living. We uh, kind of, to, I guess, maintain our marketing integrity, uh, call upon our own residents to be models for us each year or every two years. And um, so these, it's really a lot of fun um, setting up in, um, photographing or filming some of the different activities around campus. This is our fitness center and uh, Carrie and Nancy just out. They, I don't think the car was moving when this photo was taken. <laughs> so, uh, yep, here's just some, uh, some more photos of different activities. We are a pet friendly community. We won't ask anyone to leave their, their fur baby or family member at home or with a family member. So this is just a photo of Len in our dining room. Um, this is Nancy. She's actually a docent at the Courier Museum of Art. Um, our, there's lots of opportunities for volunteering in the area, whether it's at the Courier, the Palace, um, the community music programs, or right here on campus, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved, which I'm sure Sylvia and Webb can talk about too. Okay, so here's some more photos of our uh, lovely models enjoying a day at Doris Pond down at Livingston Park, or just hanging out around the gardens here. As I mentioned earlier, we are located across the street from a huge nature conservancy. Uh, there's hiking trails and a new uh, ADA compliant trail that was built about a quarter mile down the street. So because it's ADA compliant, you can bring a walker or a wheelchair or, you know, whatever the needs are um, that, you know, fits into that definition, the trail is accessible for all. It's called the All Persons Trail. And we're so proud to have that huge asset just right down the street. It's pretty cool. These are a few photos from the Nature Conservancy taken by Bill Foss, who writes a nature email to about 100 people every day, kind of documenting what's going on over there. So I, I stole some of his photos here, borrowed them. 
This is a look at the current front entrance. We'll have some new images soon. And so if you have any questions up to this point, please pop them in the Q&A. Uh, or if not, we'll we'll get to those at the end. And from here, Katie is going to take us through some of the home uh, details. All right. So hi, everyone. Um, my name is Katie. So I am one of the sales counselors here at Riverwoods Manchester. Uh, so as you can see from this picture, uh, this is just one photo of one floor plan. So if this is not specifically something that you may be interested in, I encourage you to come schedule a tour and come see all of the options here. Um, but this is just one picture. So this, uh, so this is of our Cedar apartment, which we're actually gonna show you a little virtual tour of. Um, so this is a 784 square foot apartment, but one bedroom, one bath, or one and a half bathroom, sorry, excuse me. Um, but it's also one combination. So this one has sort of a darker uh, countertop, white appliances, white cabinetry. Um, but it gives you sort of a really nice open living space um, as well as a nice bedroom size. You can fit a queen size bed in there easily. This is another option. Um, so this shows that uh, this particular resident decided to have vinyl flooring throughout the apartment um, as opposed to carpet. So just other options that you'll see within uh, the different styles. Again, just more pictures. Um, so in this one, we have stainless steel appliances. Uh, this one has sort of a darker granite countertop. We do also have Corian and a couple of shades of granite. Um, still the white cabinetry. Uh, there's also toffee colored cabinetry um, and I think another shade of brown as well. This is a view from one of the hallways um, just to give you an idea of what the hallway spacing is like. And this is a view from our Poplar apartment. So this is our largest apartment. Uh, so a really nice, large living space. Um, uh, this is two bedrooms, two baths, and a den. Uh, so it's, it's quite a lot of space for this one. Sorry, Katie. I'll keep jumping. That's all right. So even more pictures. And again, we encourage you to come see it in person because um, pictures don't always do justice to what you see firsthand. Um, you know, this just gives you one example of how to arrange furniture. You can arrange it however you would like. We also have companies that we have relationships with that can help with that process. They know our floor plans. They can help with downsizing because that's not a small task by any means. Um, and can, can sort of cons consult on what can fit in the space. Um, so again, just more pictures from the interiors. Uh, this is a different granite countertop. Uh, this one has the uh, brown cabinetry and stainless steel appliances. Um, and there's quite a lot of variety that you can experience. So we were, uh, so this is our Aspen floor plan. Uh, so this is our smallest apartment. This is 624 square feet, one bedroom, one bath. Um, this is a very interesting floor plan uh, right now uh, because we have introduced, and I'm sure that you saw my face on an email saying hello, <laughs> showing you our smart home. Uh, so we have started incorporating uh, smart technologies, so uh, Alexa and all of the gadgets that come with that uh, into our Aspen floor plan at the moment. Um, and what that gets you is more accessibility, a lower carbon footprint, um, as well as just some very cool technological features. <laughs> as someone with two engineers in my family, I'm all for it. <laughs> so uh, this just gives you one layout. Uh, we can apply the smart home technologies to any floor plan. So if this is something that you'd love to sort of talk out, incorporate, we can do just pieces of it. We can do bundles. It's up to you. Um, so give us a call, come schedule a tour, and we can, we can talk that out of what's possible. Um, this is our cedar. So this is probably third up from an aspen. So this is the one uh, whose pictures we started with. Uh, this is the one bedroom, one and a half bathroom. 
Um, and we're actually going to show you a little virtual tour, uh, walking you through um, an example cedar apartment. And it's 784 square feet. We'll just pull that up on the screen in just a moment. Can you all see? Yes. Okay. So um, we have virtual tours of all of our floor plans. Um, so if you know you come see a few apartments and want to keep them all straight, we can send those to you as well. Um, but again, seeing something in person does it the best justice. Uh, so right now we are looking through, actually we were looking at the living room, now we're looking at the kitchen. So again, this has granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, and white cabinetry. This is one shade of vinyl flooring as well. This is the view from the couch in the living room, just to give you an idea of sizing. So you can easily fit you know, a, a dining area in the bump out. You could make it just a, another sitting place. It's really up to you. This is the view from the bedroom. So you can easily fit a dresser, chair, end tables, and your bed in there. Um, bathrooms tend to be universal in size, no matter what floor plan you're looking at. Um, they tend to match what's going on in the kitchen. Um, so if the kitchen has this granite countertop, you will see that in the bathrooms as well. Same with the cabinetry. <clears throat> So this is a different view from that same bathroom. Um, as you can see, we have grab bars in our showers. We can also place them by toilets or wherever would be deemed safest and most useful for you. We do have medicine cabinets for some extra space. Um, and it's very, very accessible. It's a really nice size bathroom. This is the half bath. So again, matches what's going on in the kitchen. Just another view. And this is one closet in this apartment. So this can be used as a coat closet. You could add more brackets to make it a pantry. Um, it's really sort of up to you on how you want to use the space. It does go back pretty far. Um, so you can fit some boxes and some maybe shoe racks in the bottom. And this is the closet for the cedar. Again, this is just one floor plan. So the closets will look different for different floor plans. Um, all of our closets come with washer dryers, um, but it's optional. You could remove the washer dryer for more space um, and use one of our laundry rooms that we have throughout our community. The last photo is just the entry to the home here. And it's our lovely entryway door. <laughs> so you can, you, it, it's really cool to see what people have put um, in their nooks outside of their door. Um, I definitely have some favorites. <laughs> one, one that I really like is that someone has a cat and they put their picture in sort of a wanted style and it says escape artist inside. <laughs> All of the different hallways, well, not all of them, but the, there are um, different colors for each floor and the, the wing hallway also, which I think is helpful when you're trying to find your way around at first. So, well, um, it was wait. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so again, this is just yet another floor plan. This is a birch. Um, so this is one bedroom, one bath, but it's a little bit more square footage than an Aspen. This is 702 square feet. Um, it tends to have a little bump out at the bottom um, or depending on which way you're looking at it. Um, and it's really, it, it's amazing how much you can fit into every floor plan. So we do have one birch available out right. Yes. <laughs> So this is our big, big news that we want to bring up, uh, which is our cottages. 
Um, so currently we have four cottages on our grounds. Um, there are two duplexes, as you can see in the photo. Um, we are going to be starting construction on 18 more, so nine duplexes, um, which is very exciting. Um, this has been the plan for a bit, and we just got the go ahead for aiming around uh, late spring, early summer to start construction. Um, we'll have more information in terms of pricing, you know, come fall, um, but it's going to be a priority program. So if this is something that's at all of interest to you, I would encourage to wait list now um, because you do have the ability to do that. Um, so we will pre make a wait list now um, so that when construction is started, you can get in as soon as possible. Um, you know, it, there's still stuff to discuss in terms of details, but it's very, very exciting. And if you're at all interested, you know, give myself a call, give my coworker Jen a call. Um, we'd be happy to talk it out with you. Yeah, we're hoping to launch the priority program for the cottages in August. So more to come, but very exciting. Sorry, Katie, keep jumping two slides. Out <laughs> okay, here we go. That's okay. So um, there's a lot that goes on in our community. Uh, so a way of thinking about it is you're not just getting your apartment space, you're getting everything that is under the roof of the building. Um, so there's lots of common spaces to go. Um, we have a library, uh, which is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> uh, a formal dining room. We have dining in independent living, assisted living, and in our memory support. Um, we do have a private dining room that can be reserved. So if you have, you know, a family birthday party, financial meeting, something that you want more of a closed door setting, um, you can absolutely reserve that space. You can even have our dining staff cater the event, um, which is really cool. <laughs> uh, you, we do have a mail room, um, so you would get a key to that. Um, uh, and our tavern, which uh, I'm not sure if the Andersons want to uh, put their two cents into this as well, but Tuesdays and Fridays from 4 to 5.30 are incredibly packed with people. <laughs> Very social. What do you guys think? Yeah, well, it's, it's a very social time to uh, get to see people that you might not have bumped into at other places, and uh, it's, it's really quite a lot of fun. The, uh, there are so many activities to do around here, you can't possibly do them all. Uh, all the trips that are run off to various museums and other activities in the neighborhood, and, uh, even as far away as Boston Symphony and things like that, that are uh, just way beyond anybody could possibly do it all. Uh, we all have individual things that we like to do, find things that we like to do. I've been working out in health clubs for a long, long time. Turns out they have a very nice exercise room set up. And about seven o'clock every morning, I go down and, and uh, pull a few weights and ride a bike or whatever. And uh, one of my other interests that I picked up on, which I haven't really done for many years, is playing bridge. There's a group that plays bridge uh, Tuesday afternoons and sometimes at other times. And uh, also there's a fellow comes and teaches bridge once a month, so you can learn a lot of subtleties about the game that you might not have other known, other realized. But I'm babbling on here, so I will I, I, I turn down my volume. I go one one comment about the tavern. It is resident run, and resident staff. So uh, you can sign up, and you can be a bartender, or you could be a cashier, or a server. And so so that's another way to. Uh, participate and yeah. drinks are drinks are inexpensive two dollars for a drink yes inexpensive is right you know nowadays drinks are quite expensive <laughs> they're so surprising <laughs> so yeah no i completely agree with everything that you've said in terms of there's so much to do that you know you'll never run out of things um and in terms of just specifically the tavern it is really wonderful to see how many resident run places we have within our community. Um, with that being said, sometimes you'll see our executive director come down and help serve. So it's really a great community aspect. Um, yeah, it, we, wasn't let, 
you mustn't go too far before let Sylvia talk about her special interest. Yeah. I'll get to that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <That's convenient. laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I won't go through this whole list, but just a couple more. Um, you know, we do have uh, community patios and balconies all throughout the the building. Um, so even if you chose an apartment that didn't have a patio or balcony specifically to your apartment, we do have ones that might be just a couple feet down the hall. Um, so it really is a great access point to sit and read a book, enjoy nature. Some people like to paint um, out there. It's really quite nice. Um, and then in the winter, um, and not just winter, we have sunrooms, so enclosed spaces that still enjoy the outside view. Um, but there are bump outs and turns all throughout the community for places to sit, read, and get comfortable. <laughs> so this is a view of our nook. Um, which you actually saw on the previous page as well. Uh, this is on our second floor of the community. Um, it has a fireplace smack in the middle of it, um, but it's a great social area um, where people come to just sit and read the newspaper in the morning. We have a BYOB social hour every day at four, um, a knitters group that meets in there. Uh, as Mr. Anderson said, uh, um, you know, card and bridge playing occurs there, um, but it's also where our continental breakfast is held. So baked goods and coffee are set up uh, in this area, and then it switches to cookies and sweets later in the afternoon. So this is a picture from our Birch Hill room. Uh, this is kind of our multi-purpose room, if you will, a uh, very large space, uh, really tall ceilings, but where everything and anything happens. Uh, fitness classes, lectures, movies, um, watercolor classes, we have choir practice, um, resident forum, you name it. Um, the room can actually be divided into two, so you can have two events going on at the same time, um, but it's a really, really great, useful space to have within our community. So this is pictures from our fitness center. Um, and this is the newest part of our community. Um, and I love this space. Uh, and the floor to ceiling windows uh, create such a nice atmosphere. Um, so in all of these pictures, well, actually the middle one has a light on, but you'll notice in the top left one, there are no lights on in that picture. And yet it's still very bright and airy. Um, so we have row machines, bikes, treadmills, ellipticals, cable weight machine. Um, and we actually recently got uh, what's called a Tempo, which I'm sure you've seen commercials on the TV for, um, but basically a virtual fitness class. You can pull up on the screen at any point in the day. You can choose what type of class, how long, what intensity level, um, things like that. And this is open 24 seven. So you, if you want to work out at 3 a.m., you can work out at 3 a.m. <laughs> this is our library. Um, so I love this library as well. I love everything in our community, honestly. <laughs> but we have large and small print books. Um, and if there's any book that we don't have, we have a relationship with the Manchester Public Library, so we can request books. Um, and this is all resident run as well. Um, and actually the residents who do run this are your song librarians. Uh, so you know it's run well and that they love what they're doing. This is just one view from, you know, a sitting spot within the community. And so this overlooks our main entrance area, um, but it gives you a great view of sort of the hills and the nature that's immediately surrounding our community. Um, you know, it is in Manchester, but it is kind of the best of both worlds to have this beautiful nature in your immediate vicinity, but are still just a couple minutes drive to the heart of the city. So you get everything and anything under the sun nearby. 
These are two pictures from our sunrooms um, that I was talking about. So uh, they've sort of adopted different themes, I will say, over the years. Um, you've got some that are filled with games and puzzles, um, as you see in the left photo, um, some that have musical instruments, a piano, a guitar. Um, there's one that has this beautiful stained glass in it. Um, so very, a wide range in sunrooms throughout our community. So you can bring a book, you can uh, ha have a group meeting. If, you, if you're part of a group, you can hold it in there, but just a great place to be. And just more pictures from the sunroom. And then we have two different pictures here. Uh, the left, the top left photo is actually of our wood shop. Uh, which we have in our community. So if that's something of interest to you, I encourage you to come by and check it out. Um, we have some very talented people in our community that are constantly making boxes, chairs, you know, wooden spoons, you name it. <laughs> um, some of this stuff is sometimes sold at our, our holiday uh, fair as well. Um, and they also look well used. Really cool to mention here, they have a program where they will repair items for mm -hmm. your, for friends and neighbors. If you need a picture frame repaired or a something, you know, or if you need to borrow a tool, they have a program um, where you can just come by and borrow a hammer or pliers or whatever you need um, that you might not have considered you to bring with. Absolutely. Um, and then on our bottom right photo, um, this is a picture of part of our mailroom, so unseen, but on the right side is your federal mailbox that you have a key to, um, so the postman will deliver it there, but then in the back and around the corner, there are open mailboxes for resident to resident, so if you wanted to send a card to someone, you can just drop it off there. Um, it's also a great place to find out what's happening in the community. There are postings and letters and notices, you know, about every, everything um, there at the front desk, our elevators, um, and then we're actually installing uh, sort of TV panels, if you will, on the floors to also help with what's going on in the community. So this is a picture of some of our residents in our dining room. Um, so it's restaurant style uh, if you want to sit down meal. Uh, lunch is open for a couple of hours. You would just come in and seat yourself. Um, but everything after that point would be, you know, someone takes your order, serves you a meal, clears the table, etc. Uh, dinner is a reservation. Um, there are three times for dinner. Uh, you would just call ahead. Um, and it's a point system, which if you're curious about that, um, Again, give me a call and I can talk in detail about that. But basically you have a number of points that you spend down throughout the month. Some can be rolled over um, and we are gonna be changing it so that uh, the points are increasing starting in August. So what's included? <laughs> so much is included actually. <laughs> So we encourage you to get an information packet as well, because there's an entire page dedicated to all of the services and amenities. Um, but some examples are housekeeping is every other week. Um, and then yearly, there is a deep cleaning. So this means, you know, getting under furniture, outsides of windows, stuff that takes more manpower and more hours. Um, we do also have trash rooms all throughout the community in case you fill up your trash can between when housekeeping comes. Um, again, dining points, uh, I sort of generally talked about, um, and continental breakfast uh, doesn't use any points. So that's always available um, in the mornings. So feel free to come down, grab a big good and a cup of coffee, um, or just have breakfast in your own apartment. All the apartments have full kitchens. So uh, you can choose to do however much or however little as you want. Um, there's a ton of events um, and activities that happen throughout our community. Um, everything from lectures and fitness classes and outings to downtown Manchester to go to restaurants. Um, as Mr. Anderson said, you know, going to the symphony, 
happens. I know that a, a couple of weeks ago they went to the Boston Ballet. Um, so there's definitely a wide range in possibilities and we always encourage new ideas. So if there's a group that you don't see that exists and you wanna start it, um, we really welcome change and we welcome new ideas. So, um, and then Kim mentioned the 33 days uh, per calendar year of respite in our lodge, that's our healthcare. Um, so again, if you got a knee replacement surgery and needed that extra bit of care while you recover and get stronger, <clears throat> you can absolutely stay there. And it doesn't mean that, that if you needed 32 days of care, you would be asked to go back to independent living. It just means at that point, you would start paying a daily market rate. Um, so there's 24 hour staffing. Um, we do have emergency response systems in place. Um, all of our elevators, bathrooms, and apartments in the bathrooms have emergency pull cords. Um, you have the option to wear a pendant, um, which could be necklace style, bracelet on your name tag, um, kind of works like life alert. Um, and then we have motion sensors in the apartments to uh, be a third backup <laughs> if you need. Uh, so let's say you went traveling for a week and didn't let the front desk know you were leaving. If that doesn't detect movement in a 24 hour period, it'll let us know and we'll you know, give you a call to start to make sure you're okay. Um, it is independent living though, but we just have some safety features in place. Um, utilities are included. Um, so electricity, gas, water and sewage, heating, cooling, all included. Um, we do also have Riverwoods Wi-Fi in all the apartments. Um, there are storage spaces that are also included, um, kind of six by eight cage areas spread throughout the community. Um, some people use it for seasonal items, bicycles, some dressers, uh, extra food. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think, in my opinion, as a New Englander, the best amenity is our winter car service. <laughs> So if you have a car that you are planning on bringing, um, when you move in, you would give a copy of your car key uh, to our facilities director um, because living New England, there is snow. Uh, so if ever there's a snowstorm, we'll go out, we'll clear your car, we'll move it, we'll follow the parking space and we'll move it back, which I am very envious of. <laughs> um, uh, but we do also have covered parking. Um, so right now it's a wait list. So I encourage you to get on that as soon as possible if that's of interest to you. Um, but it's not the end of the world if you don't get that due to our winter car service. Is there anything you wanna add, um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson? Oh, well, it sounds pretty good. I think I'll sign up. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> the first storm when we moved in, we had a snowstorm and I was the first one out to clear my car because I happen to like to shovel snow. So you don't have and to wait fine. if you want to, but it is a good service if you need it. <laughs> yeah. And that actually um, is a great point to make. You know, just because there are these amenities doesn't mean that you have to use any of them. They are just available to you at any point in time. Um, so if, if, you know, cooking meals is who you are and who you want to be, then feel free to cook all of your meals in your, uh, own space and you don't have to come down for a sit down meal. Um, it's really just all of this is available to you. Um, some other benefits that exist on our, in our community. Um, so we do have some, what are called enhanced living services, um, usually not to start, usually down the road. So if you need, you know, additional help with, you know, medication administration, for example, or companionship, something like that, uh, we can put those in place. Um, and the benefit of that is it's all our own staff. Uh, so it's people that you're familiar with, you know the level of care you're going to be getting, um, and it's not rebuilding trust with strangers, if that makes sense. Um, we do also have um, an office space for physical therapy, occupational therapy, and visiting nurse. Um, that's on the first, first floor, um, and they have an office space there. Uh, we do have weekly lab drops um, and blood pressure checks. Uh, Elliott and Catholic Medical Center are our two closest hospitals. 
Um, so they come into the building uh, to do lab work um, in our wellness clinic um, and then free Rite Aid deliveries. Um, we, like I said, we have a wellness clinic. Uh, that's where our nurse practitioner's office is. And there are, um, I think, two uh, sort of uh, exam rooms as well in there. Um, so if you had you know, a cough that you just couldn't shake and you just don't know whether it's something to worry about, um, you can feel free to ask our nursing staff, you know, am I okay? Or should I follow up with my primary care physician? So I did mention the pendants. Um, so those you would get um, and the pull cords and the emergency sort of services um, in that regard. And then the last one is a little bit different um, from the others, uh, which is called benevolence. Uh, so in order to move into the community, you do a financial assessment. Um, but if you find yourself running out of money sooner than expected, and the thing that I always like to say is, and as long as you haven't gambled it all away in Vegas um, or gifted away major portions of your assets, uh, you can apply for benevolence and it's reviewed yearly and help subsidize that monthly fee. Um, and if that's something you wanna talk further about, you know, feel free to give me a call um, and I can sort of explain that more in detail. But basically it's, it's we would never, ask someone to leave merely from outliving their assets. It's really, a, you're here for the rest of your life and we want you to be here for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's the not-for-profit 501c3 advantage, for sure. So how do I qualify? So let's say, um, you know, either from this <laughs> or you've come from for a tour and said, you know, I really love this place. I want to pursue moving forward. Um, there are two assessments, the financial assessment um, and the medical assessment. Um, the financial assessment is a couple of pages that you fill out. You know, are you planning on selling your house? Do you have anything in stocks and bonds? Do you owe anybody any money, like a mortgage or credit cards? Um, and we send that to our finance team who looks at your actuarial age plus two years. Um, as well as any possible situation that could occur. Um, and uh, basically says, you know, yep, you're approved for a cedar apartment, for example. Um, and the reason being is we want you to be able to live your life comfortably here. We don't want you to be stretched for means or, you know, worried about things down the line. We want you to be able to live here in an active, comfortable life. Um, so that's one part of it. And then the medical assessment um, is done with our nursing staff, um, takes about a half hour per person. Um, but the point of it is, is independent living, you know, appropriate for you? Is it safe for you? Um, it's not something you need an absolute perfect score on, but as something that we need to know that independent living um, is the right option. Uh, so once those two things are done, uh, you can be offered an available apartment at that point. So once you have been offered that apartment from the two assessments being done, uh, you can go back for three days, you know, say, do I really want to commit to this? Um, and in that three-day period, you would need to deposit 10% of the entrance fee. Uh, this can be wired, a check, however you want to go about it, but 10% is due at that point. Um, and then it's a 60-day close. What that means is the remaining balance of the entrance fee and the first month's rent um, would be due by day 60 from offer. Um, so in that time, you'd be talking about, do you want to make any changes to the insides of the apartments? Uh, talking about movers. What name do you want to be on your name tag? Um, et cetera. Uh, and, and so there's a lot to talk about <laughs> in that range. Um, and then, you know, once you've closed on the apartment, you can move in. And you don't have to move in at that day. It's just that's when the closing happens and you could move in two months later if you wanted to. Um, sorry, the pictures of everybody keeps being on the wrong side of where <laughs> the slide is. Um, so uh, why is this DCRC the best? Um, it's you being in control of not only your life, 
but your assets that you have worked hard to gain in your lifetime. Um, you're deciding where your care is going to come from, who it's going to come from, and you know what's going to happen if you need that care. Um, it's also a really wise financial investment. Um, a lot of financial advisors love CCRCs because it's such a good way of using your assets. Um, but basically, you are in control and you're deciding your future. Um, it's not a mystery. It's not something that you'll say, you know, oh, I'll deal with down the line. You know what's going to happen if you find yourself needing it. Um, so if this is something that's brand new for you, um, I encourage you to talk to us and talk it out further. But um, it's a great plan to make and time to make it. <laughs> All right, so with that, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you have questions, enter them in the Q&A function, and we'll take this time while we're waiting for questions to come in to hear from Sylvia and Webb, if you wanted to just share a little bit of, you know, your thoughts on, you know, how you decided to make the leap to Riverwoods and some of the activities you're um, engaged in and um, anything else that you want to mention that we didn't sort of chat about earlier. <laughs> Lots more of that. Um, we started the process by talking with our three, three children to decide whether we were going to be able to stay in our home in Chester uh, long term, getting help and so forth as we needed to. And the conversation quickly came to, we really, you know, we really do need to make a move. And so we began to look and it's interesting because we found a little tiny ad on the top of a paper that said something about Birch Hill because it was Birch Hill when we moved in. And we came to a luncheon, heard some programs. I signed up to say, yes, I'll hear more. And, and we ended up here. Well, probably it was over time of three months, four months maybe, and had to sell our home. And I think the hardest thing for many people is the thought of cleaning out a home that you've had for years. And when we did make the move and tried to get settled, you found that everyone who's here had to go through the same process. So there was a lot of kind of support and friendly, you know, you can do it. And, you know, take time to do this to meet some people here. But there was a friendliness that uh, we found right off when we moved in. Uh, once we get over the exhaustion of the first few days of, of the actual move and unpacking boxes. Don't even, um, mention, don't even mention COVID. No. <laughs> well, we got shut down the week after we moved here. We had had dinner in the dining room twice. First two nights, I think we, we brought food up to our apartment. We were so exhausted. And then things were shut down. And I have to say, that we were in the best place when COVID happened because the we you know they really were protecting us. We went and we did masking. Um, no, there was no dining room, but they set a system up so we could pick our food up. And then once you know it was probably a year later when the first vaccinations were available, and that was all done right here. We had our paperwork filled out and they had it streamlined so we got our vaccination. And the same thing with the second one. And then later when the booster came up. So we really have been a community that, that has worked together. And when now, if someone gets it, have you been close to that person? Uh, some will say contact, so wear a mask. And many people wear a mask just, just for their own feeling of safety and others of us wear it when we think we're gonna be in a, you know, a, a sit down group with people. So some of it is you, you take a risk. I always wear a mask when I go out to the supermarket or some other place. But as, as uh, Webb kind of suggested, I spend more time outdoors than I do indoors, I think. And I do have, have a lot of, uh, gardening experience in the past. And I've been able to do a lot of gardening here. In the winter time, I can water plants and fertilize some plants that are around the building. Uh, so I've, I've done 
you know, little of both. And there are a lot of gardens. So if you like to garden, if you like to just deadhead plants, you know, there's so many things that are available. And I find that just being in this area, the way the building is set up and we feel we're in our woods and there's a picture of the birch, birch grove on the screen. I don't know whether it's there for everyone. And in the winter time, they put lights on it and just go out, walk on the balcony in the evening to see something like that. But um, I do use, I might, get, I usually get down to the fitness room about six o'clock and there's usually one person ahead of me. Uh, but it doesn't mean that's the only time you can go down. It's available. And, and musical programs, someone does play the piano. Uh, I happen to like puzzles. So I, and there's not room to spread out and to do a thousand piece puzzle, but there is in the sunroom. And so you can always invite other people to come in and share making a puzzle or go and find a different space to read a book. I tend to finish a book at night and I'll go down to the library at 10 o'clock and find a book, to, another book to read. So. I think one of the interesting things, changing subject a little bit, uh, is why people come here. Uh, in our case, we were familiar with Manchester. Chester's a few miles away, but you go to church in Manchester and have for several years. So that was an, a relationship which we maintained. We also have three children. One lives up in Concord, which is about, I don't know, 20 minutes away. Uh, one's down in Arlington, Massachusetts, which is an hour and a quarter away. And one's up in near Portland, Maine. So uh, unlike some people who have children scattered all over the country, ours happen to be within a uh, simple driving distance. So, and yet we're too far away to do babysitting. So that's kind of <laughs> making it a little more convenient. Our kids are grown and the grand, grandkids are grown too. <laughs> what happened to the questions? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at those. So Katie, what is the average age of our residents? It's actually a really good question to ask because it's changing is how I would put it. Uh, you know, I would say statistically late 70s, early 80s is probably the average. Um, but I would say it's getting younger and younger um, in terms of inquiries and people moving in. Um, we've had a couple people recently that moved in at 62 and 63. Uh, and 62 is our, our minimum age. Um, and I think that COVID had a big factor in this um, in terms of suddenly the world was met with an emergency and people started to realize, do I have a plan for if something were to happen to me? So inquiries and move-ins have become younger um, to be smarter about getting older. Um, and I think that if you ask me that, you know, in a year or two, I think it'll continue to change. Absolutely. Yeah, I think isolation was really hard on a lot of people too during COVID, but we were so lucky here in a community, you know, there was um, just so much support and connection in safe ways. As a resident, we definitely, I definitely felt that, that you might not recognize someone because they've got a mask on, but you could at least say, good morning, how are you doing, you know, and talk with people. So it was not the feeling that over and over, I think we would have been so isolated had we stayed in our home. And I would have probably have gone out and do, done the shopping and come back. And, and so that was very important, I think, in terms of, of getting to know people in the community and, and feeling the support that we had here from the staff and the staff is wonderful. And you know, the, the, we didn't see it a lot of the kitchen staff because food was delivered, but, but now it is such fun to, to, you know, experience the kids in high school who are maybe serving dinner at night. Um, and there really is a very close feeling among the staff and the residents. I think of it as a culture, as a culture that prevails here that both on part of staff and amongst residents that are, the friendliness is just the, the way it operates. 
uh, people may have a, be having a bad day, but you don't you don't see dark clouds hanging around people. They somehow or other perk up when they're with other people. It's uh, it's really a delightful atmosphere, I find. Yeah, it seemed hey. unreal to me at first, but <laughs> same here. <laughs> <laughs> I keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know, there still has to be something bad. <laughs> No, we are the friendly community, that's for sure. So uh, John's asking, are there vegetable gardens? And you know, <laughs> we have we have 12 raised beds and places for putting up some temporary or some portable raised beds. But we do have people who sign up to have a raised bed. Uh, many of them have uh, uh, flowers, but we also have people who have um, I've seen radishes and carrots, uh, green beans, pepper plants. The one thing that we only have a few of this year is tomato plants because the experience of having the tomato blight on so many of the plants and there isn't the room to rotate tomato plants. So we did let people know that if you grow tomatoes, there, they will be susceptible to a blight because it's a four year rotation. And so many people decided, no, you can have, I, I grow lettuce. I like lettuce in my sandwiches for lunch that I make. So I I have lettuce plants. I didn't get kale in this year, but I've had kale in the past. And, and every, well, about four or five people have chives and that's probably enough because if someone wants chives and you don't have any in your bed, you ask the person who does have some and people are happy to share. Parsley, rosemary, you know, some of the, the uh, herbs. In fact, there's an herb garden outside that the kitchen can use. Yeah. So yes, yes, if you want to grow vegetables, <laughs> some beds have sun longer in the day than others, but um, it's, it's something people love to do. Excellent. So next question, is there transportation available locally or to Boston? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yes, there is transportation. We have uh, cars and vans uh, that go to different zip codes on different days as a standard. Um, so if you had a grocery store you wanted to go to, a bank, a doctor's appointment, whatever it may be that lands in that zip code, um, you can feel free to just put your name at the front desk saying I want to be on this bus or van um, and they can take you there. Uh, doctor's appointments get priority um, for anybody who's using that service. Um, with that being said, you can also reserve transportation. So if there's a spot that you need to go that's outside of that day's zip codes, um, you can reserve it. We just ask you to call at least a day ahead. Um, it's $30 an hour worth a minimum of a half hour, um, but you can use that to get places as well. And there are people in the community, um, some that have cars, uh, who will offer rides to people as well, which I find wonderful. It's really, it's a really cool feature. They, some people do ride sharing or shopping trips if it's a day that other people need to go. It's a nice aspect. All right, last question. Any units that have bathtubs instead of just a shower? So uh, not as a standard is how I will answer that. Um, you know, showers are the safer option. They're less of a fall risk um, for people. Um, any age, <laughs> they're just, showers are a safer option. Um, so we put showers as our, as our standard in the apartments. With that being said, we do have one or two residents or people moving in that have decided to put a bathtub in their apartment. Um, this would be an external cost, but it is something that we can make happen. It's just a conversation with our facilities director on you know, what type of bathtub, uh, are the materials available, what's the timeline, things like that. All right, last call for questions, everyone. I'm not sure we have another slide. We don't. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, is there anything else that you wanted to add before we wrap up? Or? Well, I have to have one fun thing. Um, we do, did have, oh, once a month or twice a month, we could talk with a group. Everyone could go 
to a meeting and, and suggest things that they wanted to do. And so one of the fun things was zip lining, which had been on my bucket list of things to do. And yes, they had a trip and, and you don't pay, you pay for the zip lining itself, but not the transportation. And, and so, so I was able to do that. And, and people have done things. I think something like going to Tanglewood is, is you can sign up and then pay for the extra things that you know, you'd have to do Tanglewood and, and lunch or box lunch coming home. So yeah, there's just, you know, there are a lot of adventuresome things if you, you're up for it. That is unexpected, but lovely. I like, <laughs> I like adrenaline too. <laughs> I went skydiving last summer, and so zip lining I would enjoy. <laughs> I've done indoor skydiving right in Nashua, actually. So yeah, you stop up close by. <laughs> I think that might be better. You get a little, probably longer ride or more time to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, there's also not a falling feeling, so. Because <laughs> it's just air pushing you up. It's cut, well, this is a whole different conversation, but. <laughs> it's good to know that's nearby too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for those that are, that are still on our webinar, um, you know, if this is of interest to you, I think the best next step would be um, to, you know, if you haven't gotten an information packet, I think that's your best starting point. Um, it gives you our floor plans, pricing, you know, our history, a little bit more about the benefits, um, and come schedule a tour. Um, the best way to have an opinion about the community is to see it in person. Um, so do that. Um, and we'll also be reaching out to you um, you know, after this webinar to see if you had any other questions that you'd love to talk out. Yep, today's session was recorded. You'll all receive a copy of a link to the recording uh, via email in a few days. You can view it again or share it at any time. I guess that wraps things up for thank today. You. Yes, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Thank Anderson, you for your time Anderson. today. All right, all right, bye everyone. We hope to talk to you soon. <laughs>